Okay, so we're um, on Pothier Road in Goshen, and uh, as you can see, this is very highly forested over here, uh, and we're on our way to Platte Hill State Park, never been there before, and we're going squatching. It's 2.14, uh, don't have the date now, but we will have the date for you, 67 degrees, and of course, for some stupid reason, we turn the clocks back this time of year. Um, that's not cool, okay? We gotta stop this nonsense. So, I know people in Massachusetts and stuff wanna change the time zones. Well, let's do that. It's ridiculous. It might have made sense in the 1700s, but it makes absolutely no sense today. It already gets dark early as it is, and then it's cold. People don't get out of work, and then it's dark. It's dark when you leave, it's dark when you get home. So, it makes for tough squatch, even though they're highly nocturnal crazy stuff out there in the dark. Anyway, we're on our way to Platte Hill State Park in Connecticut. Um, we're getting reports and people are, um, there's, there's another uh, cryptid show that's interested in our footage. You gotta give us credit. We might talk. But it's, it's really squatchy just going there. Winchester, of course. Winchester, Connecticut. There's Winchester Lake there. That's not far from Winstead. Winstead Wildman, of course, is a type of Bigfoot, very famous in Winstead, Connecticut, and well known throughout the area. Long, long history of sightings associated with blueberries, interestingly enough. Uh, and then in Winchester, there was the Witch of Winchester, and of course, Winchester Lake has the Winchester Lake Serpent Monster, so it's, it's a cool town, a lot of creepy history. So there we are, we're on our way we love you out there. Check out, of course, our social media sites, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We're getting a lot of response on Instagram and Twitter, so we're loving you out there. And if you want to share some, some of your sightings and evidence with us, we'll follow up. And uh, we're having fun. Remember, this is about having fun and going to these beautiful places. That is the primary purpose of what In we one do. one quarter mile, turn right on Brand Hill Road. GPS is yelling at me to take a right. Um, but it's about being out in these pretty places in the state forests and state parks, especially during this coronavirus. You want to get out there before you go nuts. All right, everybody, keep cool Turn out right there. On Brandy Hill Road. We're taking a ride on Brandy Hill Road here. It's it's very squatchy on this drive. I've never been down this this road. We're on Wani Road. Um, I'm guessing in either Goshen or Winchester, and it is definitely squatchy out here state forest on one side we have some agricultural development and a couple of houses wow wow this place is nice vistas so we just wanted to share that drive with you check it out over here camera person and we got this creepy barn here rocks it's like it's like a rock barn Backwoods, Connecticut, right here. Squatchy as can be. A nice scenic drive Connecticut here you go all I did is type in Platt Hill State Park in my GPS and it took me this way and wow this is nice we're on the Squatch Watch uh, we're gonna talk about little people a little bit today uh, we don't get into that a whole lot but we got something to show you Anyway, we're going to give the camera person's arms a rest here, but just in the drive-in, my initial impression is we've been driving through this forest for a very long time, and wow, it's cool. Check it out. All right, we made it to Platte Hill State Park. There's the sign. Uh, the entrance is closed, but we're going to walk in there, so let's go.
All right, so here we are at Platt Hill State Park. Um, immediately, here's the stone structure. I don't know what it's for. And we have two clearings for power lines. We talked about power lines before, how there's a lot of Bigfoot activity associated with power lines. Well, you have them cone right through here. You can see why. Look at the density of the forest. Now, if you're an upright hominid, about 800 pounds like I am, you're going to use that. And uh, there's a lot of blueberries along there because it gets sunlight through the forest. So here we are. We're going to go check it out a little further. Cool stone structure here. Just really cool. Old, heavy stones. Reminds you of something you'd see in Great Britain. That's why it's New England. Very dense mountain laurels. Of course, it's November 11th, and um, it's unseasonably warm, 67 degrees. Absolutely beautiful. Little little overcast. Um, but there are more sightings in Connecticut in the fall and winter months, and part of that, um, I think, is if you look through the forest here. Part of that is because the leaves are gone and you can see through better and that's going to increase your sightings. Uh, this place is very cool. We haven't done anything yet, but we're still exploring. Um, so on the web page, they said that the trails were not blazed. Well, here's a trail. Uh, is it blazed? No. Uh, they said that uh, has to do with something with the Department of Environmental Protection. But anyhow, um, there it is. It's as clear as day. We're at the far end of the loop here, and we're about to go into a scenic overlook here. There's a picnic area here, and uh, let's just go check it out. We're going to do some stuff. Enter. We're going to talk about little people. Okay, so we said we talk about little people. Uh, we're not talking about little humans. We're talking about an actual uh, cryptid subspecies. Little people, um, like the like the Fiji hobbit. Um, so here in Native, uh, the Native Americans in our area would have called them puck wedgies. Different tribes have different names, and and I'm not a, a Native American historian, so I'm not going to pretend to be. But the ones here are called puck wedgies, and of course. You know, you have your gnomes. That's Highland Lake down there. Uh, oftentimes, one of the things I like to do is leave a gift for the little people. What I leave is a penny. If you can't afford to do that, you know, if you have no penny, a hay penny will do. Well, well don't use a hay penny. Then God bless you. Um, but the penny, because it's pure copper, it's, it's one of the noble elements. Gold, silver, and copper occur, occur in nature in their metallic state, so they don't have to be um, forged. And those are the three noble elements. So copper is probably the most useful to little people. A penny, if you're a little person, you can bend this into all sorts of little things. It's easy to see, and I usually leave them uh, in a random place, usually on a stone. So we're going to place this later. Um, but these puck wedgies... Well, there's a lot of activity of them in, in Massachusetts in their Bridgewater Triangle. If you're in Massachusetts in that Bridgewater area, check it out. We're not traveling out of state because of the coronavirus. Um, but here we are. This place is squatchy. We're going to leave this as a gift. And I think we're going to have a female howl. And then we're going to listen. There's a little construction activity going on, so there's some background noise. But this place, this place is amazing. And there are trails here. Let's have that howl.
place is cool. And there's more more uh, responses to female calls than male calls. And that's probably territorial stuff, you know, aggressive behavior. Right now, if, if squatches would have had their babies in early spring, late, late, late winter, they'd be young adults, so you'd, you'd still be looking out for them. You wouldn't want to naturally, if you're a female squatch with juveniles, you wouldn't want to um, respond to that kind of male aggressive call. So we like to break it up here, see sis. And uh, getting back to the puck wedgies, the, the little people, they're reported, of course, in the Catskills, um, you know, in, in Western culture, Rip Van Winkle and that whole thing. Uh, there's a lot of little people activity. And um, your gnomes, elves, and, you know, of course, in the Isles, over there in Great Britain again, Ireland and Scotland, they all had their traditions. Um, the, your typical sort of Nordic gnomes are very brightly colored. That doesn't seem to be the case here in North America. Um, did you hear that? I heard a call tap. Now the little people. And here in Connecticut, we have the Little People Village, and uh, that, that place has a lot of history. We'll put up some nerd facts about that. I believe it's, I don't even know the town. It's just outside of Bristol, and um, we're going to be going there on one of our investigations. There's some really interesting structures there. There's that, um, there's that, the King's Throne there. The little people's the king of the little people's throne says if you sit in that seat you'll die within a year i mean i don't know if it's true or not that's just a legend we won't be sitting in the chair that was <laughs> we're actually going to be gifting there and we're going to gift this coin we're going to move along to another vista and uh but i did hear a call tap or i heard a large a, a, a loud banging noise sounded every bit like a call tap to me so Let's find a stick and we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Call tap. It's kind of loud here, um, but there's it's it's squatchy. So let's not rate it yet. We haven't done a call of tap, but um, the howl, give me a howl. A lot of, a lot of construction activity here, but this is a cool place. And the website said there are no picnic tables, but there are picnic tables here. So part of getting out to, hey, we're on location. Check us out on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and uh, Facebook give us your reports or just anything reach out to us we'll respond and um we have some people from other shows interested in what we're doing and like i said on the way in you know we can collaborate but you got to give us credit we got to make sure you're going to give us credit and uh you know if we're going to give up some of our evidence we got to get some evidence so <laughs> that's how it works out there in uh in, in documentary land and other cryptid investigation shows. Yeah, we'll work with you, but we got this. We got this. And so we'll talk. Um, a lot of big trees here. All right, we're moving on. That looks like a d big canine print. There's only one, and it's it's on this unmarked trail here. Just to put my hand next, I'll give you some size. 
and it's about five six inches it's about four or five inches something big okay so here we are gifting our puck wedgies our little people our elves whatever you want to call them look at this little depression there you go we'll say heads up we'll do heads up copper one of the three noble metals a very useful metal for these little people they'll know exactly what to make out of it and it might seem like nothing to us uh, but there it is and I don't know I don't necessarily know that that's a little little person little hobbit hole if you will uh, but it's cool and here we are and this is a cool place sort of the wildlife is eerily quiet here other than the agricultural noise which you can hear in the background but there's there's mirrors in here which we decided to not photograph we're just not going to go there there we are and uh, that always puts you in good standing with the little people and you definitely want that you know? so they just sort of let you go friend you almost Flat Hill State Park, a very cool place. Uh, we'll get down and do some call taps. We're starting to get into some stuff. You know what? We'll do one right now. Oh, and there we are. Here we are in Connecticut and doing an investigation. You cannot do one for any length of time without an airplane above, even during coronavirus. Here goes the guys from the BFRO, the Bigfoot Field Research Organization going to California. Have fun guys. God bless you out there. Hey, doing the good work. They're cool. So, you know, we talked to rocks. Big glacial erratics moved here during the ice age and then erratic because they're just an erratic displays. So these things would have been pushed by the ice shelf and then as it melted, they would have been just deposited in these strange random places. And here we are, here's a monster. We have some kind of vegetation growing on this rock. And of course this lichen that actually eats rocks. You know, we talk to rocks. People on their cell phones, they talk to themselves. So we talk to rocks here at Cecil's. We already know we're crazy. So. Do you 
seen any kind of little people, pup wedgies, uh, little guys, pointy hats running around in the woods? No? I don't, I don't know about that. Are you harboring any little people in these crevices here? I don't know that they tell me the truth, these rocks. But this, this here is a monster. Little chipmunks and squirrels have been eating these acorns. Of course, acorns, that always means a lot of animals, a lot of deer. Deer, that means a lot of Bigfoots. Um, we think we've been hearing, it's hard to tell with all the agricultural activity, but we think we've been hearing some call taps here. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a howl. Uh, maybe a different kind of one, a low key, like we did at Mohawk Mountain. Oh! One, two, three call taps in that direction. Did you hear that camera person? Did you catch that? We heard a call tap, and we're going to try to do a response as soon as we find a stick right in this general area by these very impressive stones. So the tapping noise, we can't identify it, was boom, boom, boom. And the birds go crazy when we're doing these howls and call taps. All of a sudden, it's quiet until we start acting up. That's, of course, the chickadee. Gets its name by its call, chickadee dee dee, chickadee dee dee. Remember chickadee chatter? Yeah, we could use a copy right now. All right, so if you're into nature with a lot of agricultural and construction sounds, this is the park for you. <laughs> uh, but it's really cool. It goes apparently down to Highland Lake, which is a little developed. I've actually worked on the house there. Um, but let's watch a meter of this place. All right, listen, I'm going to go a 3.7 now we're gonna go down to a three all right a three on the squatcher meter it's very squatchy but as far as investigating I don't know it's noisy it's hard to tell you got planes got leaf blowers going chainsaws I did my call tap and we heard tapping noises now that could just be construction or whatever it's just loud here we are November 11th Wednesday 67 degrees right now it's probably about 315 hey we got to get out of these woods soon because of course you know at 430 it gets pitch black because the craziest thing we do here in America is turn the clocks back so whoever's responsible for that you get like a minus five on the squatcher meter you're down here okay i don't know if some people say that's benjamin franklin i don't know i gotta look into it. we'll put up nerd facts on the time thing but if that's you benjamin franklin if that's you thomas jefferson or one of those guys that's not your highlight that's, that's that you're getting a thumbs down for that one you know whatever that's messed up whoever did that we're gonna find out we're gonna put up the nerd facts and we're giving you a minus five on the squatch meter for not being cool. Freaking time zone change. Some very cool glacial erratic rocks here. Uh, nice scenic overlooks. But in my opinion, you're better off at Mohawk Mountain. Yeah, I think we're getting, what do you think rock? Better off at Mohawk Mountain? Nah, they like it here. <laughs> They're like, shut up at the Mohawk Mountain. Anyway. Glacial erratic rocks. We love them.
we gotta find this path again before it gets dark. That's no joke. And, and as you know, listen, always be with someone. I know you hunters out there, you're, you're not gonna, gonna be like, oh, I'm armed, I don't have to worry about nothing. Well, you check out that missing. We talk about missing 411, David Pilates and that whole group. Check them out, man. Don't go in the woods alone. Stay in contact with your hiking partner. I mean, chances are nothing's gonna happen, but the more you look into missing 411, the scarier it gets. And they're not sure. There's a whole lot of theories. Is it big? Is it Bigfoot? Is it interdimensional stuff? Um, there's a long history of Native American stuff called Gone Missing. It happens in Australia. It just happens everywhere. It happens in cities. If you want to get yourself scared, check out Missing 411. We're going to get out of here before we're missing 411. All right, everybody. Flat Hill Farm on location. Having a lot of fun. Remember, it's about exploring these places. We go there, uh, rate it for you. That's really what we're doing. It's, it's a tourist thing. You know, we're showing you these off-the-grid sort of places. This place is cool. It's okay. You know, it, it certainly is wooded. It, it feels squatchy. It's just too, too too much human activity to really have an accurate judge, a judgment of the noises you're hearing, any kind of responses. And that's a shame. You know, that's a shame. It, it's really nice here. So we're on our way out and it's been quiet the whole time other than man uh, man made activity and noises blue jays and squirrels are going nuts back here Definitely stirred something up. And it just got a three on the squatch -a meter um, but it's creepy here and what's up with that mirror there's the mirror we talked about you see mirrors in the woods just leave them alone there's, there's no other pieces of mirror around I don't even want to get my reflection in it We started call tapping and howling and that just started the birds up. Oh. I don't think they were too happy with us stirring something up like that. There's tapping, and I think we caught that. They got that dog barking down there too. Dogs are barking on this side.
All right, you know, let's re-squatch. Let's re-squatch a meter of this place. On the way out, you know, we weren't initially impressed. Then again, it doesn't look like a whole lot of people come here. It's creepy, gigantic trees, a lot of acorns, call tap responses. Camera person saying stick with three. I'm going to go 4.2. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll stick with three. But this place is... It's hard to describe. Probably a good place for little people. Kind of glad I left that little gift for them. <laughs> Anyhow get out to these places thank you everybody for following our social media i won't ramble on about the various sites you know them check us out send us your reports and um, let us know let us know if you like what we're doing or if you don't like what we're doing remember we say it's about getting out to these little known places and then just we sort of squatch and, and talk about history and now we've added nerd facts so we're gonna we're gonna nerd it up on this one and give you a lot of facts on some of the things we talked about today. Bye, everybody. So, uh, on, on the way in and the way out, I guess one of the really cool things about this place are the random stones. Of course, they're just massive, and they're just on top of this other massive, massive stone. And uh, you do have a field here. There are no facilities. There's no bathroom or anything here. Uh, it's a nice little walk around. And if you want to bring your dogs or your, your whatever, you want to just hike and you're not into like a crazy hike, well, this road is closed and it's a nice road. You can go around. It's about a mile, maybe two miles in total. And it's cool. It's cool. Feels like somebody's watching you or something's watching you the whole time you're here. Big trees, like big trees and big rocks. Here you go. Check it out.